Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soup Bowl. On tonight's menu, we have Baldur's Gate, the Enhanced Edition. Now, this was basically the game of my childhood, besides Diablo 2 and probably SimCity as well. I played this game to death, basically. Um, about two years ago, was it, I believe, they released the Enhanced Edition. Um, basically, a remake of the game by Beamdog. They took the Baldur's Gate 2 engine and revamped Baldur's Gate 1 in it. It's something that the modern community had been doing for a long time and before then. But it's nice to have the complete full package and uh, no hassling with mods, uh, no problems with system requirements. Uh, I know the original version of Baldur's Gate was basically unplayable on the Windows XP for example, so I'm really glad they released this version. Now, like I said, I've played this game hours and hours on end and I'm not gonna do a regular playthrough, you could say. I'll talk about the challenges a bit after the intro video. Right, so, Baldur's Gate, um, as you can see here, it's a Dungeons and Dragons game, it was released in, was it 96, 97, something like that I believe, it's set in the, um, the world of Faerun, which is one of Dungeons and Dragons biggest um, fantasy worlds you could say, I'm not a big D&D player, I've played it for a bit, but I'm mostly in it for the computer games, uh, setting wise, or edition wise you could say this is released under uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2 I believe the, the, the setting name is uh, it's quite of a weird system I'll explain things as we go along for people who have not played this game yet or don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons now like I said I want to do a bit of a challenge and well judging from the name of the uh, of the video and the things you see here on the side um, this challenge is going to be a bit more random. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to randomize and we'll talk about that as we go along. For now, let's just create our character. I want a new game. Now, I already know what I want my character to be. For the people who've never played Dungeons & Dragons or who don't know the system, I'll give a quick rundown as we're making our character. One of the things I want to randomize, which is, well, a bit silly, you could say, it doesn't really impact the game that much, but our first choice is choosing whether we want to be a very manly man or a very chickly chicklet. I'll leave this up to the fates. I'll just randomly generate here. Number one will be a very manly man. Number two will be a, a chicklet. Let us click the button. We have number two. We'll be playing a girl. Uh, let's see, I think I have a decent portrait for this. This one? Maybe this one. Ah, let's go for this one. Alright. Now, we have a choice of a few different races. We can be plain old humans. We can be a very elfy elf. Uh, yeah. A mudblood, basically. Gnomes, halflings, dwarves and half orcs. Now, this is the first sign that you're not playing the original Baldur's Gate because in the original Baldur's Gate there were no half orcs. They were added in Baldur's Gate 2. So this is one of the nice options you have when you want to replay the game in the enhanced edition. 
Now for our character we're just going to be a plain old boring human. There's nothing too special about our character. He's she, or she I should say, is basically just a girl growing up in the small castle village of Candlekeep. Now class-wise, Baldur's Gate, hundreds of different kinds of classes going from your standard fighter to your uh, naturey fighter and your holy fighter and you have the healbot cleric, uh, the healbot druid who can also turn into animals, mages, thieves, bards, you name it. Now one of the things the enhanced edition did was add kits. Basically you have your standard fighter who can do anything like wear, web, uh, wear all kinds of weapons and armor and hit stuff really hard and then they add stuff like the Kensai who's not allowed to wear armor but can hit stuff even harder for example. Most of these are classes from Baldur's Gate 2. They added a few new ones in the Enhanced Edition like the Dwarf and Defender which I cannot select because you have to be a Dwarf. So that's a bit of replayability which is one of the main reasons why I like the Enhanced Edition so much. To be really honest I've only completed one game so far under this edition. It was somewhere last year so while I know the game quite well, I might be a bit fuzzy on some of the um, added quests, for example. I might have done only once or not at all. So, yeah. Anyway, for our character, we're going to select a sorcerer. Now, sorcerers are not a class officially um, in the Enhanced Edition, or I should say the uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons system. They basically added a, this as a prequel to Dungeons and Dragons the third edition so this class works a little bit differently than your regular mages uh, they can cast any spell they know at any time but they have a limited number of resources a day which is a little bit different than how mages usually work now the enhanced edition added the dragon disciple which is one of the new kits it gains some extra armor class bonuses it can use a breath weapon um, to 30 feet, no, right. Begins a few bonuses over the levels, uh, basically more resistances and uh, armor class. Also, it has an upgraded hit dice, but you can cast fewer spells per day. Now, which one of these two is better? I'd probably say the sorcerer, because spells are more important than uh, survivability. You can get that by other means. But I think for this challenge, the extra hit dice and the extra armor class might be better so I'm just gonna select the dram dragon disciple now alignment wise I'm gonna pick true neutral and abilities now if you've never played Bal um, Baldur's Gate or a Dungeons Dragons game this might be either somewhat confusing or very self-explanatory you have your strength which governs your uh, ability to hit stuff really hard, your dexterity which comes your ability to dodge and shoot bows, constitution is your life points, intelligence is how smart you are, wisdom is um, well knowing not to stick your hands into fires and charisma is how uh, fancy you can be in persuading people. Now every cleric, uh, cleric, every character has some stats which are reported to them Sorcerer not so much because they don't have a prime casting stat. For example, the wizard needs intelligence at high levels in order to cast spells. Sorcerer really doesn't. Uh, it should be charisma, but it was never implemented. So I'm just gonna hit random a couple of times. I'm not gonna min-max this character. Um, I'm basically looking at decent constant. Oh, this is actually quite a nice roll. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Now skills wise, the sorcerer doesn't have a lot of skills. He can pick a dagger, quarter staff, slings or darts. These are the only type of weapons she can use. Well, we're not gonna wanna get her into the front lines anyway. Um you know what we have four choices. Yeah, you know what? Let's randomize it. Why not? Number two. So daggers, quarter staffs. There we are. Now, this is where the randomization comes in a bit. We have a couple of spells we can select for our first level, and to make this challenge basically the challenge, 
I'm not gonna select any of the spells. I'm gonna let the fates decide what spells I get. So we have this is 6, 18, 22 spells. So let's generate a number, number 6, which is Chromatic Orb, the first spell we get. Quite a decent attack spell, I'm not too... Well, I usually don't <laughs> really use it in-game. Uh, it's quite alright, but the saving throw means that, well, it doesn't really do that much uh, most of the time, but... It's decent, it's decent. Alright. Uh, and the second spell will be number 16, which should be... 18. This one, protection from evil. Eh. Eh. Alright, if we have to. <laughs> um, quite a good spell. It's it, it's basically free two armor class points, um, but the duration is really short. Um, in Builders Gate 2 it's quite useful because it protects against uh, demon summoning, for example. If you summon a demon, they can attack you, but there's an upgraded version of this spell at Cleric level 4, I think, um, which lasts for hours instead of rounds. Uh, rounds in the game, this basically means 12 seconds in real time, if I'm not mistaken, so not the worst selection we could get in all honesty. Uh, we could have gotten protection from petrification and infravision, for example, the most useless spell in the world. Anyway, not too bummed out about this. Now, appearance-wise, sure, looks alright. And we'll just select the voice here then. Go, go, go! Everybody listen to me now. Now you're go I've always been leadership material. She sounds a bit naggy. Who's it? It's about time you recognize my superior qualities. <laughs> right. Um probably not. <laughs> Let's just stick with this one then. And for a name, um Let's go with the soupy team. Strun, which is an Italian soup stuck to the brim with uh, all kinds of vegetables and some uh, like little pasta shells. Don't really know the name. Little pasta shells. There we are. Right. Let's start here. Nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, the citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress, kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the Forgotten Realms. It is secluded, highly regimented, and it is home. Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your twenty years of life within this keep's austere walls, under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters. Lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold. That of your true heritage. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever, and now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day. Imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel, he has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candlekeep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey. Alright. Now, before we get into the game proper, I'm just gonna test my sound values. I'll be back in a minute. 